Hi, welcome to Looptopia, where we're creating our own utopian homestead. Today I'm reviewing the stove we just got for our tent, and we are decided to go with the Winterwell Woodlander, the large one with the uh, double glass. So let me show you what that looks like and how it comes. So this stove actually costs more than our tent, which is kind of surprising, but uh, I have did a lot of research and people were really happy with the winter well and I'm sorry that is how it arrives in the size box but this is it uh, we have not burnt it yet so this is straight out of the box I'm assembling it for the first time and we did buy some of the accessories because we do plan on actually probably putting this in our next house in the the kitchen when we build a more permanent house so we decided to go for a high quality one. Supposedly these stoves last forever. And uh, my partner Lorelai loves to cook, so I got her the little oven accessory. If you've never seen that, it is an oven that actually the uh, smoke doesn't go in it. It goes around it. So it's hollowed out and it heats using the uh, st stove smoke, basically, what goes up the pipe. This accessory here is the water it fits on the back because we um, are burning a lot of power heating water and we'd like to change that over to wood because right now a lot of times we just stick a hot kettle a tea kettle on the solar and you know we have very limited solar so I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy about that when this comes out of the box it has three legs and we were kind of concerned about the three legs we were like man this thing's probably uh, gonna blow over or something but it is super solid I'm actually surprised this thing's a little heavier than I thought it was. The steel is nice and thick, like the piping is real high quality. I am so far super impressed with this stove. And again, this is a higher end model, so I expect some quality, but this is really good quality. I'm going to, so when you get a new stove, the first thing you're supposed to do is burn it off. and. I'm assembling it to burn all the pieces and then that way you don't get those uh, fumes and burn off stuff from the metal turning and the metal will turn from this pretty silver to kind of like a patinaed little rainbow coppery thing and that's completely normal apparently the other thing is if you're gonna burn off the water tank make sure water's always in there never leave the water tank on without water so I'm going to finish assembling this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's fully done. This is the end of the stove, the Asher Ruster. And it has these clips on the large model for the tie down so you can stabilize it. They kind of go in and out there if you don't want to use all three. They slide in. This was actually kind of hard to get out. There was a whole section in the instructions about how to pull the arrester out. And there's like a, uh, there's a wire in there. You gotta grab that and pull. It was not self-explanatory. You think it would be easy to figure that out, but it when I pulled on it, it didn't come out, and it didn't come out, and it didn't come out, and I was like, man, I don't wanna break it, but you kinda gotta wiggle it and pull it pretty hard to get it out. So that's the end of it, the spark arrester. Just wanted to show you how that worked. So here it is all assembled, and you'll see it, it's actually really high. I would say this thing's about 10 feet high, um, maybe more. I don't know. But that is because I bought this baffle piece here in the middle. This, in case you don't know much about uh, stoves, if you never had one, this is a triple wall insulated piece. And what it does is it takes the temperature down to like less than around 100 degrees. So that is the part that'll be exiting the tent. And it exits through this hole called the stove jack. Um, that is a safety measure. It is an extra piece you have to buy. It does not come with it. You don't have to have it, but it's, I'm a, you know, we're living in a tent with fire, so I'm, I'm getting it. The other thing is all these pipes, the rest of everything else fits into, um, when it's assembled, disassembled, it all fits into the actual oven and the arms fold up and you can carry this thing. So without the accessories, like if you take off the, the oven you take off the water and you take off the baffle all the rest will fit in the 
stove itself. Um, I think that's, that's about it. So we're going to give this thing a test burn here and see how it goes. And the dog, of course, wants to come out and help. And here's our, we just got some hardwoods to burn. Oh yeah, in case you're new and you don't know this, you cannot burn just any wood you want to burn in a wood stove. You can once, <laughs> but uh, the problem is we have all these pines and I can't use pine at all in here. So we can only use the pine kind of for the outdoor fires. Uh, so we actually, because I just ran out of time this year, I just bought some seasoned oak in hardwoods. So you want to use hardwoods. The box is only 18 inches long. So if you're ordering hardwoods, make sure it's less than 18 inches. And um, you kind of want the smallest pieces. We talked to the guy we ordered from and he's like, oh, you want tiny pieces? Great. Nobody ever wants these things. Everybody wants big logs. So we got a good deal on this stuff. And he stacked it. Yeah, and he stacked it. That's right. If you're watching uh, and you're in South Carolina, contact Greg's Tree Services. He made us a heck of a deal. All right, the inaugural light. Here we go. Pretty excited. So the fire's going, and immediately you're going to kind of notice that the wind is blackened. But I am told that as soon as this thing gets up to temperature, that it burns clear and that'll all dissipate. So it looks like it is immediately drafting well. I mean, the smoke went right up. And we have a new pope, it's a new space pope. So you can see now the windows are clear. You can see the fire burning. Uh, we've got the flues all the way open, but you can already start telling the discoloration on the pipes. They're already starting to heat up. I think I gotta burn this a lot harder though. Um, I don't know if the water's boiling yet. No, nope, not yet. So as a, we threw in junk water in here. Stuff I don't really care about because we're just going to dump it. Uh, I don't think you should drink the first waters coming out of there. And I think that's about it where we are. Do you see how pretty it is when it gets going? All right, so we finally got it going. We we just kind of didn't have really good wood to start. We, we have wood, but not the right kindling size. Anyway, it's going now. Um, we put a thermometer on top to see kind of where we're at. So we're in a good safe spot, five, 600 degrees. But what I'm really impressed with is this thing's over 400 degrees. Look at that, 450. And That's I crazy. just opened it. So the way you have to we're gonna experiment with this probably make a video after we practice but what I'm told is basically you have to close the flue to control the temperature by the way this is a comes with it this is an ash scraper on the bottom it also has these hooks that you can hook this piece and pull it up if you wanted it's pretty cool but the reason I wanted to show you around the backside is the water was boiling well it wasn't until I opened it too much but uh, that was pretty cool so it definitely works. Oh wow, around back of it is warm. This is nice. You can hear it going. So the tent we have has a stove jack already ready to go. You unzip it from the other side. It does have a zip underneath here. You'll see like there's a zipper. If you just want to put it right to the floor, you can. But we got a cloth because we are going long term in here and we're also going to put bricks on top of this just so we can set like pokers and dirty stuff and not have to figure out how to clean this thing all the time so now i'm going to install the stove jack which is over here this is the winter well stove jack works for the medium the nomads and the large so but if you don't have a winter well it is i think Anywhere from two inches to three and a half. So we are going to install this. And what you do is this thing clamshells. And you'll put the bottom ring inside. Then the rubber goes on the outside and the top ring. And I'll show you how we're going to line this up. So these are what the bolts look like. And 
this is the bottom ring and you'll see the top ring actually has the nuts kind of welded on they don't really go anywhere and you will sandwich the rubber between them so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna try to keep the integrity of this other ring because I think I can my pipe should fit through that so I don't really want to have to cut the whole thing out but I am gonna have to poke some holes in here and what I'm gonna do is just use a marker to mark where I want these alright so there is the marks you can kind of see sorry the back lighting's probably screwing this all up there I'm gonna use just the tip of the box knife to do this and just enough that a screw will go through I really like to leave the integrity of everything if I can so you can see the holes going through we test fitted the ring again just to make sure it fits and the hard part for ours was we had to actually cut a little piece of the rubber out to get in there but we're good to go next stage is we are going to install the actual silicone part here onto the baffled pipe the one that's triple walled and that we will install as one section and then we'll actually bring the oven in and, and build it around that pipe sticking through all right so we're going to pre-install this around the baffle and it's a perfect fit for this i didn't have to cut anything because i bought the winter well product with the winter well stove so this should be relatively easy i'm going to double check that it fits on the, the baffle out the pipe and it does so I shouldn't have to do much at all all right so here's what it looks like installed um, because we're using the Ozark trail tent the rubber actually went over a little bit but it seemed to clamp on pretty good once we poked a hole through it so I think we're okay leaving it and there's plenty of room and if you look up there's no daylight good to go this was a blessing it installed really much easier than I expected so here's what it looks like from the other side and you'll notice it like the weights pulling everything down but once we stick the to the uh, stove in it'll push this out and you won't have an area where the water pools this is a pretty neat design you can pull on one side and it zips it it unzips it and then you pull on the other side of the rope and it zips it back up so you don't have to climb up over your tent and fall through the roof or anything uh, it's a neat design and it even has a little clip here so this just you know winds up like a tent and and it's got holes on the corner for drainage so hopefully this will work pretty good I'm, I'm excited you'll notice that it's the uh, rubber gasket is skin tight should be good so we're just basically letting this thing cool down all the way it is really close and we'll take it in but I'm probably going to put a cement floor in like this just use these blocks you don't have to do that but we you see how we have like wood and an ash bucket and stuff like that it's just nice to have a place to put all this stuff okay so this is it fully installed and you see it goes Probably about five feet over the top, maybe five. I'm not going to use the tie lines unless I have to because I've only went up basically three pipes. I think it'll be stable enough. But if not, I will tie them down to probably those little things right there for the guy lines. I, I think it's done. I'll give it a test run tonight and film it see how it goes now it's installed you can see how we put it so the little flap that plastic flap uh, is pushed up it's no longer concave it's convex and it should run the water away from it so you don't need all the accessories but they make it a lot easier like the baffle pipes worth it I think the water tanks worth it is dead space that you can't really do much with and it saves you from using up like a kettle there uh the other things i would recommend the oven we haven't tried enough but i'm really excited about it i mean the way we look at it is you know we run almost everything on solar here and we do have a primitive campfire stove you know but 
we can cook we have like a little rocket stove and that's fine in the summer we'll cook outdoors not a big deal but we're already burning wood to heat ourselves so now we can bake in an oven we can cook on a co uh, a wood stove top basically um and we can heat our water all in one shot that saves a huge amount of electricity for us during the winter when the sun really isn't out and we're we're wrestling and chasing the sun just to stay afloat so i'm very excited about this opportunity we'll let you know how it goes while we're using it here it is all installed and we're going to give it a test run tonight but you can get an idea of what it looks like in place and how big it is compared to say a tote so i'm really happy with how this turned out and i thought going through the stove jack would be a lot harder now again it does not come with that you have to order this the, the uh, rubber stove jack money well spent but yeah because it's kind of expensive i think it was like 60 bucks or something but i it you know for us we have mosquitoes up the wazoo here even in the fall and even in the spring you know where because you were like oh in the winter you don't have to worry about it but we still got mosquitoes in the winter sometimes it's december and i just yeah. got bit so so we want absolutely no rain mosquitoes or nothing in here uh, i think it's well worth it for that piece we're very excited we'll give a report we'll probably like i said uh once lorelei practices cooking on here a little bit we'll do a stovetop demonstration and an oven demonstration oh, yeah. see what tips you learned over a few weeks i'm gonna try it out tonight yeah right on and heat up some super all right i will get one more view of this running at night so you can get a better idea what it looks like so we started it up and it took a little bit to get going but it needs a lot more fire starter stuff if i recommend uh, maybe actually using a real fire starter it's actually burning a little hot right now i'm gonna take it down but uh you can use the little sterling engine on top if you want it actually works pretty good and that's it going It's a lovely fire. And like I said before, I'm told that I'm kind of annoyed that the glass is so smoky, but I'm told it burns off. I just haven't seen it happen yet. I forgot to mention that it heated pretty quickly. It was 60 degrees in here. It's now about 72 when 20 minutes or so. So this is a 10 by 20 wall tent. So it's pretty good. Uh, it would you say what we're about half full with wood? Yeah, half full. It, so it, it got pretty I, blazing. I think if you pack this thing, you would cook yourself out really bad. Like I would go very less well, wood. It did go up into the too high range, and the oven yeah. was at five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the water's boiling. You can hear it? It's been boiling a while. I probably need to take it off. The dog approves. She likes this. She is definitely always looking to steal your heat. She might even kick this blanket off, I have a feeling. It's cooking us out now. So this was our first night in the tent with it. And how do you think it did, Lorelai? I think it did pretty good. There was a learning curve. If I would have had a bigger piece of wood, it would have burned through the night. Yeah, we were using, we were worried that this would cook us out. And it kind of did it, it when the wood was too far back it would get into the stovepipe and it was it was like red hot yeah at night there was a glowing tube and we're like uh oh i was like i have an oven light <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the light you the can oven see in the oven right up. A... so I, I would say we avoid that by just not pushing the wood all the way back right that's yeah that seemed to do the trick and then just turning the dampers down yeah we turned the dampers way down um so yeah it gets it gets really hot if you it don't uh, don't respect uh, so we were also i would say we were only burning maybe half the chamber full of wood and we were getting three to four hours it wasn't bad yeah so if we 
I would rather do the lunch. learning. I would l rather do the learning curve now while it's not freezing. No. I, I think there's a balance because if you do stuff this thing full, I think you're going to turn this whole thing cherry red. Um, so we have to figure out. I believe you put the wood more to the front and stack it up. Well, I think it'll last a longer time too if I put a bigger piece in. I had smaller pieces yeah. that I just stacked more in. But if it would have been like one big log, it would have been fine. But it did. Uh, it did keep a ten by twenty tent very warm. Oh, very warm. Yeah, it's just not as many hours as I was hoping. So we just. I think that's totally on us. I don't think that's the stove. It's just well. I mean, we got to learn how to use the stove better. But otherwise, everything else is awesome. We even made. Uh, we warmed up some cookies. It was great. The oven worked good. Yes, it did. So we had pretty heavy rain last night and it actually leaked through the cuff, like where the screws screw in. Because the, we have a rubber gasket on there and it's odd shaped, I can't cut it all the way out and have enough fabric left. So I either got to move up to a much bigger uh, stove pipe, like a, uh, a collar, the hell am I trying to say, stove jack collar, or um, what I did is I taped it all down with the uh, piping tape and then this is just regular metal tape I don't think it gets that hot right there so it's pretty ghetto but hopefully this works the other thing we did is we pulled the rubber sleeve all the way up so now the tent is kind of like a little volcano the rain should just run away instead of down the screws and in so we're hoping this fixes it pretty not really ideal and probably won't last forever but we got to find a better solution than this there's a few things I want to add about this stove I would say it took a little bit of a learning curve and there's a couple things that now that we burnt it a bunch of times I want to add so the first time we did it the windows got really black and creosote and we used good wood so I don't know what the deal was I think Maybe with the initial burn off, there might be oil on the windows or something, or just the initial burn out. And uh, so we actually had to scrub the windows to get them clean. They never got better. Like people said, oh, you just burn it and then it clears itself out. It never did. So we cleaned the windows. And then after we cleaned them the first time, now they stay relatively clean. Like maybe once in a while we might have to get in there and wipe it clean with a, uh, you know, we just use like a wet rag, right? And then... I only had to clean them the one time. Yeah, that's about it. So other than that, now they're crystal clear, and if they do get a little smoky, it does burn off. So that was true. That worked good. I, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Also, this is kind of um, divided on the internet. A lot of people will heat their stoves up to where they turn cherry red. And I... I'm kind of torn on that because I thought it damages the metal. Like when I was just doing a lot of silversmith work, when you get something that red, it's about to melt. <laughs> you know, that's how you anneal uh, steel and stuff. You get it that red. So I don't think it's probably good for the metal to get it that red. But some people run it that way all the time for years. So I don't know, maybe put your comments below. Are you do you redline it? <laughs> do you uh, you cook that thing till it's cherry or or not? Because I don't think it's good for the metal, but. Uh, some people, you know, swear by it and say it doesn't hurt it at all. And I would think that the company who built this would know, obviously, that's going to happen a lot. But our, uh, our little oven on top, the bottom of it turned bright red. And Lorelai was joking that we had like an oven light because it would heat up so high. So we, uh, we try to control that by, you know, using the dampers and taking it down when that happens. But as far as we have it in a 10 by 20 tent... And it is at its limit with that. It is in the middle of the tent. If we crank a lot of wood, we can heat it. But if I were living like way up north and the winds were in the negative degrees, it would be hard to keep a comfortable temperature going in this. It's just not big enough. I, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think if we lived in New Hampshire, would this still be enough? In that tent, no. Not in a tent. Not not in that big of a tent. Maybe in a small tent. Uh, or maybe if we had a heavier duty tent. Or if we hung insulation on the walls or something. If we put like, you know, some people uh, hang 
comforters and stuff all over the walls. Yeah, our tent's not a canvas tent, so it's yeah. a little thinner. We kind of have a hybrid canvas tent. It's not quite a canvas tent like an old army tent. It is, you know, we got it for a fraction of what the big tents cost, like a fraction. So I'm not expecting a huge amount of it, but it does pretty darn good for the price. Oh, it's it excellent. Is, it's great. But as far as insulation goes, I don't know if you could go real. Like if you're going to take this up into the snow, you're probably looking at maybe a 10 by 12 tent is probably the max it could do. Yeah, I don't Maybe 10 by 15 if you pushed it. I mean, you could, you could run it and keep you from freezing to death. But as far as keeping you warm and comfortable where you can walk around in like, you know, a flannel and get up and pee in the night without freezing to death, you can, um, I would think you would need uh, maybe a heavier duty. You need a better tent. I think. I mean, this is the biggest tent stove I know of that they sell of this quality. And I think our tent's just really big and the walls aren't reinforced enough. They're not warm enough. Yeah. So, if you can fix those two things, you can probably use this, to, this anywhere. As far as cleaning and maintenance goes, it's been pretty easy so far. I will say, on really cold nights when we burned a lot of wood, we did have to clean the ash to get all the way through the night to make sure there was enough room. I had to clean it in the morning. You had to clean it in the morning. So you yeah. get through about one day burn, a hard burn, without having to clean it. But after that, you're kind of pushing it, I would say. Because we burned it probably 12 hours maybe 15 hours and uh, then we had to clean it out and we're using pretty high quality oak so it's not like trash wood so one last thing Lorelai wanted to point out was now that we've had some practice with this the flues on here um, are really well designed right like yeah, you can they're no joke they control it really quickly like you can control the temperature really fast with them and because you have two different flues you have one in the pipe and one on the the front door and um, say you want to use a little oven thing, you can actually control the oven heat by turning the flues up and down. They'll adjust in about four or five minutes to where you want it. So it's impressive that way. The weird thing, I've never had a stove like this. It does not have a threaded gasket. Um, normally with a wood stove, you have like a little rope on the door that seals it completely shut. This one has like gaps. It never is 100% shut. Like you shut it and you can see a little, There's a little gap thing. around the door. It's not airtight. Um, and I guess maybe they do that on purpose to keep a draw going. Because you can damp it all the way down and there's still air getting in there. And I think it just pulls it from that. And the uh, the little lid thing on the top never seals 100% either. There's always like a little light coming out of it. So I guess it's designed to do that. You can see a better example of what I'm talking about in this picture. You'll see there's like a little light coming out of the top of the stove and a couple little points and along the door you'll see like a red line glow that is uh that's where i was saying it doesn't seal 100 percent i'd say i'm really happy overall with this product i think it's really high quality there's again a little learning curve but i'm sure if you're a tent stove expert this is nothing to you but for someone that really hasn't used a tent stove much at all, uh, my partner has a bunch, but I haven't. So it is a bit of a learning curve, but it's really a good, good stove. I would say if you had the money, it's worth it. Uh, I can't speak for the cheaper stoves. If you guys know some better stoves that are less expensive, you can put them in the comments. But I have a feeling this thing's going to last pretty much the rest of my life. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy with this buy. Lastly, remember that uh, YouTube pretty much hates my channel and blacklist it. So you're probably watching this over on Brighteon or Odyssey or BitChute or somewhere else. So if you are, please use the Amazon link below if you're considering looking. And remember, even if you don't buy the stove, if you're going through our link, it does help the show. It is pretty much the only way we make any sort of money anymore is through the Amazon link. So that is appreciated. If you want to see our uncensored stuff that's not allowed on YouTube, check us out over at Brighteon or uh, bit shoot. I appreciate you guys and your support. We love y'all. Take care.